What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna be talking about peak flow monitoring, why it's important, and what you need to understand about it to be a quality respiratory therapist. Let's dive in. All right, so as I said, we're talking all about peak flow monitoring in this video. Before we jump into that, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the TMC and the CSE Bootcamp resources available, available for you to help you pass your credentialing exams on the first attempt. So if you would, check that out. I would appreciate it. Uh, let's kick this off with a practice exam question. A 16-year-old patient records a daily peak flow of 215 liters per minute. Their documented personal best is 550 liters per minute. Which of the following should you recommend? Now, before we even start looking at the answers, let's just stop right here. Because you see, when you are taking your credentialing exams or perhaps your exams in and during your program, you come across questions like this and they're not always over things that we review all the time. Peak flow being one of those little nuances where you're like, ah, I wish I could remember those numbers and the details about a peak flow. So really, to really be able to answer this, questions, this question, there's uh, something that we have to understand, and that is we have to understand what it is uh, pointing out to us right here is that this question is about peak flow. Now, peak flow monitoring is something that... that um, Patients living with asthma should monitor on a daily basis. That's why it says daily peak flow. And then it gives us these numbers. Now, to know the answer to this question, you have to understand and, and be able to apply those numbers. But before we jump into that, uh, let's first talk about why and what is peak flow monitoring. Well, what we know is that this is a useful tool to help our asthma patients monitor their daily either progress or regression in managing their asthma symptoms. This is something that should be done routinely. And our job is to teach them how to do it correctly. Now what you see here is these are two peak flow meters and these individuals are are performing these peak flow maneuvers. And what we know is that the peak flow is one deep breath in all the way in and then forcefully exhaled as fast as possible. Something similar to this. <gasps> this device would measure the peak expiratory flow rate, which is important because you may see this referred to sometimes as PEFR, peak expiratory flow rate. And so we know that that's what these individuals are doing right here. We also know that these devices come in various shapes and sizes. So we see multiple different peak flow devices, but we also see similarities between them. They all have a mouthpiece and they all have these numbers on them. And these numbers are what is going to be recorded. So when I perform that maneuver, <gasps> I'm going to get on this readout here, this red dot right here, this red gauge will move up wherever it moves up to in that single forceful exhalation. That is going to be recorded as the peak expiratory flow rate. And that's important because what we also notice that they have in general is they have these color markers, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, and these are important because what we know is that these devices are, are designed to, to maybe not necessarily help your asthmatics or, or patients living with asthma to, to understand what peak expiratory flow rate is, but to simplify a system for them. Egan's talks about it right here in chapter 25, uh, page 518 of the 13th edition. It says to help patients understand home Peak flow monitoring, a zone system corresponding to the traffic light system, may be helpful. This is why we refer to these as the green zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. And knowing those zones is exactly how you answer this question. Okay, so let's quickly review those zones. So remember that this is all based off of personal best. So your, your, your patients perform this when there are no symptoms 
present, and they will establish a personal, a personal best peak flow reading. Now, as their airways become inflamed and, and bronchospasm and uh, excessive secretion starts to, uh, let's say, flare up during an asthma exacerbation, our airways are going to get smaller. We're going to have an increase in airway resistance. What this does is, is this is going to reduce our peak expiratory flow rate. So our personal best is here, but as we get sick or have an exacerbation, we see our, our expiratory flow rate is reduced. And that's where these zones comes in. Now here's your numbers you're looking for. Green zone. Green is good. Green means go. Green is right where you want to be. Green says you are within 80%. So you're 80 to 100% of your personal best. Now what that means for, for, for the, the asthma patient is, is keep doing what you're doing. Your, your, your asthma uh, management is in check right now. You see, when we start to break down below that 80% mark and we start getting into the 70s and the 60s, now we start dipping down into the yellow zone. Yellow zone is caution. Yellow zone says maybe you should step up your, your medication regimen according to your asthma action plan. You need to do something more because it, it, you're, you're not in your green zone anymore. And then, of course, the red zone, which is described to be less than 60%. Now, before everybody says, I learned 50%. I'm sure you did. Um, and, and I did, too. And I actually went on and tried to do some research and found that uh, some resources still refer the red zone starting at 50%. Egan's refers to it at 60%. Egan's references the um, National Asthma Education and Prevention Program uh, for their source for that number, and they say 60%. Uh, various different uh, allerg asthma and allergy um, uh, resources uh, cite either 50 or 60%. I think the point here is, is that you start dipping down into the 50s, you should probably be on alert. If you say, oh, I learned less than 50, so I'm not going to, to be concerned until I'm at 49%, so 51% doesn't alarm you, I think that's going to be a problem, right? And so what we see here is there's always variations in normals and scales and things like that. Uh, but what we know is, is that as you dip down below 79% and you're in the 70s and the 60s, you need to step up your, uh, to the next step in your asthma action plan. And as you dip down into the 50s and past 50, you now have presence of an asthma exacerbation and you need to seek medical attention. Contact your healthcare provider, go to the ER. Um, you, you need, you need to, to, to see, you need help because you don't want to mess around with this at this point in time because asthma can be grave. And so we, we, we want to get on this early. And that's the point of the, the zone system is to track daily. I'm at 90%, I'm at 85%, I'm at 81%, I'm at 77%. It may not even have anything to do with one day, but maybe a, a, a decline over several days gives you an indication that, hey, there's something's in the air and, and my asthma isn't liking it. So that's how we use the zone system. And that's how you're gonna answer this question. 16-year-old asthma patient records a daily peak flow of 215 liters per minute. Their documented personal best is 550 liters per minute. What should you recommend? You've got everything you need to answer this question right now. And here's how you do it. You're simply going to take, you are simply going to take your number right here and your number right here. And you're going to do the actual number divided by the personal best and we see what we get here so we just take our calculator and we say 215 divided by 550 that equals 0.39 and that means we have a 39 percentile we are less than 50 we're definitely less than 60 and we are in the red zone and this patient needs to seek medical attention. Now look at the other answers here because you can see why this is important. Answer A here is continue their normal treatment plan. 
B is increase the frequency and dosage of their re rescue medication per their asthma action plan. And C is stop taking their scheduled maintenance medications. Well, let's just first of all start here. There's always one answer that's absolutely not correct. You would never want to instruct an asthma patient to stop taking, taking their scheduled maintenance meds unless they were going for a PFT and they needed to be held for that reason. But in this situation where you're monitoring peak flows, it, it, it's not going to be just stop taking your maintenance medication, okay? Especially when you have a decreased or reduced peak inspiratory flow rate. Now, let's look at the other two real quick. Answer A. What was answer A? Continue their normal treatment plan. You see, that would have been the right answer if this would have been within 80% of 550. So if it would have been 500, that's about 90%. We'd have been in the green zone. That would have been the correct answer. Increase the frequency and dosage of the rescue medication per their asthma action plan. Guess what that is? That's the yellow zone. So you see, when you get these questions pertaining to peak flows, you've got to understand the zone systems because every answer is probably going to be relevant to one of the zones. So you have to figure out which zone am I in. Let me show you one more time how to calculate what uh, where you are in your zone. So like I said, if we have, uh, let's say you had, let's say this number right here was, was 355. Our personal best is 550. So you're going to go 355 divided by 550 and that gives us 0.645. Call it 0.65. That's 65%. Now we're in the yellow zone. Now the answer is B. That's how you use peak flow monitoring to answer questions, but more importantly, to help educate your patients living with asthma so they can take better care of themselves and manage their symptoms at home better because you have a greater understanding of it. So um, that's peak flow monitoring. I'm Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor if you haven't already done so. Hit that subscribe button, the like, and leave me a comment. Would love to hear what you think about this video. Uh, you're here on YouTube. Stay right here, please. Instagram, at Respiratory Coach. TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. And you can always, always, always reach out to me or find out more about the services I provide by visiting respiratorycoach.com. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.